what's going on awesome people and we're back for the second ig live of the day hope you're doing great i'm not gonna lie i just woke up from a little nap so if you're gonna see some puffy eyes i apologize sorry i'm fixing my my uh, my little ig live anyways great to see you all again uh so what we've been doing here at the awesome people instagram lives in case you haven't been paying attention we are introducing one by one the most awesome people that are helping out as ambassadors to the July 3rd Ozadi Festival. If you have no idea what the Ozadi Festival is, stay tuned. Me and Andy are gonna talk about it. Um, and then afterwards, you can click on the link in my bio to find out more. But in short, it's the ultimate 12 hour Iranian festival celebrating unity through culture. And we're gonna have uh, a lot of great things happening both in person and online as it is being simultaneously live streamed. So, uh, we've been having these little conversations with everybody, so you guys get to know these really great people a little bit better. Actually, I get to get to know them a little bit better, too. We've been working so hard, we haven't had a chance to really uh, get to know each other. And so here's an opportunity for Andia to share her story. Uh, but as a little background before we bring her in in just a moment, she is an Iranian Zarashian activist who's passionately and unapologetically has been seeking change. I love people who are unapologetic. Just be you, be yourself, be authentic. She's a part of Generation Z uh, and has been using her fierce zeal for humanitarian work to strongly advocate for Iranians globally. That's actually how I came across her. I saw her really great videos on, on social media and that's how we connected, that's how we stayed in touch. And now we are working together to put on a great program on July 3rd. By the way, Andia, if you're here, please click the request to join button so I can bring you on. Uh, her consistent social media work and involvement in the Woman Life Freedom Revolution has led to her speaking at large campaigns that aim to end gender, in, gender, gender inequality, uh, like the Red Card Campaign at the United Nations. There she spoke and catalyzed uh, essential conversations on ending gender-based violence, discrimination, and apartheid in the Middle East and Africa. And now we're so grateful to have her helping out with the Ozzy Festival. And she's really kicking ass for us on TikTok because that's a place where we're, we're lacking a little bit. 20,000 followers and fans. So she's been doing something great on TikTok and we get to talk about it here. So without any further ado, Andia from the DMV. Hi, how are you? How are you doing, Andia? So, I'm doing well. Yeah, Thank so great you. to have this I'm little virtual chat here. with you. We haven't actually fully had even a video call, so this is great to actually truly meet you. Same yeah, here. It's, likewise. It's a um, so to I be gave here. a little bit of a bio, you know, a little general bio, but I would rather you kind of, in your own words, uh, tell people a little bit about who Andia Mehrostami is. So. I'm a Persian Zoroastrian girl. I'm 25, and I've been involved with, you know, Iran and human humanitarian work since the Green Revolution. And it's just been something that I've been really passionate about. And in college, I was really involved with philanthropy and, you know, fighting for women's rights. Um, and I think that my identity as a Persian Zoroastrian girl has been really, it's been so much resilience in me as being a minority as being someone who you know grew up in a family with more traditional views and my father actually he was a he protested in the 1979 revolution and was heavily involved with that and that's been he's been one of my biggest inspirations by far i mean he's instilled so much passion within me and he's such a good example for me to fight for women's rights, fight for the women and men of Iran, and just I'm happy to be here. And yeah, so it sounds like you've been a work. revolutionary baby. You know, it's been trickled down from the whole family. You mentioned that you started in the 2009 uh, Green Revolution. That's a long time ago. So you you started at a very young age. So kind of tell us what your first memory has been of like being so active within the revolution. Um. I would say one of the biggest things that struck me emotionally was when Neda Ava Sultan was murdered. Um, that seeing that video on YouTube really struck me in a way that was unforgettable. And and ever since then, my dad would take me to protests, and you know, it taught me how privileged I am here, 
in America where, you know, Iranians would die to have the freedom that we have in this country. And it created a lot of passion within me to continue, you know, all throughout my life, I want to continue to be the voice for Iranians and amplify their voices. And ever since the Green Revolution, it's just been an ongoing fight and, you know, 43 years of being robbed of our culture and being put in this position right now. But I definitely am optimistic and hope for a free Iran. And that's that's why I'm here so today. I, I, and I'm I know you've been on this fight for quite some time. Tell, tell me, take me back to like September of 2022 uh, with the death of Master Jina Amini. So what, can you kind of take me back to that date and like what triggered you to probably get even more involved again, just like the rest of the world did? Um. I would say when just seeing the haunting image of Massa, you know, in a coma and then just realizing that this isn't, this isn't new, but just knowing that it was racially incited, that she's a Kurdish Iranian woman, she's 22 years old. It could have been, you know, anybody, it could have been, if I was living in Iran, that could have been me. And it just struck me as to get outside of my bubble and realize that there's so much going on in the world and, you know, just seeing how resilient Iranians are through this movement 10 months of active protests it's just it's just inspired me in a lot of different ways to acknowledge you know how how blessed I am here but then also just seeing these different stories a lot of the time too I mean I'm very active on Instagram and TikTok I get a lot of messages from Iranians inside of Iran you know really sharing their horror stories but also sharing their happy moments and these glimpses of joy of joy that they feel um, throughout this movement, whether that's, you know, being able to protest by letting their hair down freely or, you know, going into Tehran and have, being able to go into a coffee shop and just seeing men wearing shorts in, in restaurants and just being free as much as they possibly can has just, you know, created a lot have of you, inspiration uh, for me. Have you been to Iran before? I unfortunately haven't. My mom, she has traveled and my dad has traveled to Iran many times. And I think for my own safety, they never really allowed me to go to Iran. Uh, my mom has multiple times been uh, stopped by the morality police when she was there. And it was just a really difficult time. She actually was held in Iran for three months, um, which was a terrifying experience and it was because she was showing a little bit of her hair so that was really scary and one of the reasons why my mom never let me go there so um i hope one day i do have the opportunity to go um, and what how old were you when your when your so. mom uh, experienced that um this was when i was around 10 I mean, to 10 that's, 11 that's, years that's, old that's, that's, uh... Um, How did you process that when I mean, this is the first time that I'm hearing about it. First of all, I'm sorry that your mom and your family went through this. And I appreciate you you sharing this personal story. But like, how do you do you remember that three months? Do you know what was going on? I don't know if that age, how much is actually uh, explained to you uh, when your mom was away. Yeah, it was something that my family like my I was actually with my dad and then also my grandparents came to be with me. And I, I just wasn't able to fully process. I knew something was wrong. I knew that, you know, she wasn't, she was still stuck in Iran, but I didn't know what that was really like until I was older. And um, her sharing that story with me really resonated because, you know, this is something that happens to a lot of Iranian women. And, you know, thankfully, I mean, she definitely experienced a lot of brutality in, in that time. But it was something that just showed me how much of a fighter my mom is and how much she also cares for Iran. And um, it's something that I'll always remember. And in a lot of ways, it's been a catalyst for me to continue and do what I need to do. And my mom is very, very proud of me and happy that I'm, you know, continuing to be the voice for Iran. Your mom is a quintessential Shirzan and she's grown another one with you. And so uh, we're all proud of you and we're proud of her for um, enduring that type of um, horrific experience. Um, one other thing that's very unique about you right now, Andia, is that, um, you know, unfortunately, maybe you can agree or disagree, but 
we would love to have a lot more support from the much younger generation, you know, and you are the TikTok generation and you've been able to really um, grow a, a big following on TikTok. Uh, I would say primarily because of all the content about Iran. So can you kind of give us a little perspective on a young Iranian that has been leveraging social media and specifically TikTok, which a lot of us over 30 are not like all that into. So it's almost like a different world, just like Twitter is a different world. So kind of let us know what's happening in the TikTok world, how you realize that, oh man, I actually can do some major damage here on TikTok. I would like to get into your mindset about that. Yeah, so Generation Z has been absolutely phenomenal with, you know, protesting, whether that's online or in person. I mean, you see in America, like with gun violence that's going on, you see Generation Alpha, which is literally children protesting and posting online. And I think with the Iran movement, there's a lot, there's all sorts of generations like Generation Z and millennials who are actively posting on TikTok. And I just, I realized that as much as protesting is amazing and wonderful, you can reach so many parts of the world by posting on TikTok. And I would post two to three times a day. And one of my most viral videos, it had like 2.5 million views and it was about civil disobedience. And it was actually a friend of mine who he had sent me this video of him and his friend dancing on the streets of Iran and she's not wearing a hijab and they're they're slow dancing and it was such a beautiful video and it was so powerful to see different people from all over the world Africa Europe Asia all of them commenting on this video and being like this is the most beautiful thing and to know that this is punishable by death and you can get arrested it's it's something that strikes a chord with a lot of people more than you can imagine and TikTok is you know I post three minute video. Sometimes I post like a 30 second video of Zahedan and seeing, you know, the Baluchi Iranians protests and people are in awe of it. They're just not connected to what's going on in Iran because the media isn't covering that. So I feel like as Generation Z, it's something that is my obligation to show what I can. And that's through channels like 1500 Tasfir, Manato, like I'm finding these this content and being able to do post you, it and really do get Do you it see a me. lot of other Iranians like your age and younger that are actively talking about Iran still now 10 months in? Yeah, for, for sure. I mean, there's and I've become friends with a lot of them actually through TikTok, which has been such an amazing community of support and being able to, you know, bounce off different ideas and there's there's a lot of gener the generation Z still actively posting on TikTok, including myself, um, and it's something that you know you learn a lot about social media and how there's different trending hashtags. There's so many hashtags about Iran that are getting billions of views, especially Maso Amini, like the hashtag Maso Amini, billions of views and you know, this generation being able to utilize it and to our own advantage and being able to be the voice uh, for Iranians. I could be wrong, but I think the Masa Amini hashtag broke a record. I think it, it's like, I don't know if it's for the year or all time. And and now, if I'm not mistaken, the hashtag no is, is trending. It's like, you know, no to Islamic Republic. I don't know if you've seen that yet, but like in the last week, there's been like an online forest fire of either no or NA. So a lot of people are creating content for no. But, but I'm, I'm very thankful that finally 10 months into the revolution, United Conquer has a TikTok account, thanks to you. So I appreciate you taking the initiative and, and they can follow us at, at Let's Unite and Conquer, just like Instagram. Um, so I appreciate that. And I hope that you're gonna help uh, us grow that so that we can get more people to know about Azadi Festival and just in general, what we're doing at United and Conquer. Um, so, so tell me, uh, um, what do you, since you've never been to Iran, um, what do you what do you look forward the most about going to a free Iran the first time that you go? Oh my gosh, it it makes me so excited to ex especially because it would be my first time. I think it's even more special to be, you know, someone who's been active in in the Green Revolution and right now the Iran Revolution. Um, I want to see Azadi <laughs> Tower and dance there and just music. I want to be able to dress freely, you know, wear a beautiful dress and just have this moment. 
um, I just think it would be really euphoric and beautiful and something that also I really, my family's all from Yazd um, and I really would love to see Peter Chak Chak or Peter Sabs and, you know, go to these places that are so sacred um, and just be able to travel throughout Iran. I know Dario was talking about that and just being able to do a full tour because there's so much to see in Iran and, um, you know, I, I really want to, and I also, one thing I, that's interesting about me, I play wow. Persian classical violin. So be, I want to be able to play the violin for like my family there and just being able to experience that moment and have, you know, my brother, my brothers play the Santur and Sitar what? and just being able to hey, Girl, you got to perform at the festival. Of, Why don't you share these talents with us? Hello. I know you're busy as an ambassador, but can you promise me a performance? Perhaps get your brother involved as well and have you perform at Azadi Festival? My brother, he, he's, he yeah, lives in Richmond, yeah, but I can definitely here. try. But even if not, it. even if not, uh, we have you okay. hopefully performing. I mean, uh, that would be incredible. What a story. Yeah, yeah of course. Um, okay. You know, Nader okay. Maj, Dr. Nader Maj with him and I'm sure he would you know love to I managed actually well. me and him go back back uh, in 2004 I believe I produced Dr. it's the Miss Iran pageant and he was one of my judges for uh for for that program so yes I definitely know actually no no I did star musician of Iran it was an Iranian version of American Idol and he was a judge for that one sorry but yeah of course definitely know I matched he's a local legend um so so tell me yeah. tell, tell me a little bit about um First of all, that video of you in front of Aussie Tower dancing, that's going to make a viral TikTok video. So I'm, I'm hoping that uh, that happens very soon because that will be definitely reaching a few million views. Um, tell us about how, you know, you were involved in these speaking um, um, uh, activities such as the red card campaign at United Nations, even though I have to be honest, United Nations has done diddly squat to really support the people. I know that it was with good intention and you you know, you were hoping that you were going on a good platform. So tell us a little bit about that experience. And hopefully you were able to touch some people and share our, our story, you know? Definitely. Um, so something I've been public speaking for a while. Um, I did a lot. Of, I started a lot of youth organizations and have been able to speak to the public. And I was invited and I was really surprised actually to be invited, but it was all through the power of TikTok and social media. And um, it was touching because when I did speak, I talked about gender-based discrimination, gender-based violence, and then being able to share what woman life freedom is really, it touched so many more pe people than I could have ever imagined. And, you know, I saw, I afterwards, there was really big UN ambassadors who came up to me and were like this, your speech, your, you know, persistence is something that really inspires me and, and has made me, you know, really want to fight for Iran and talk about Iran. And that's all I wanted. I wanted more UN ambassadors to care, to care more, share more and being able to listen to our voices. And unfortunately, you know, I'm, I am really disappointed in the UN. Um, seeing how even just recently they appointed the Islamic Republic to the UN Human Rights Social Forum. And it's just, it's really discouraging. But at the same time, I do have hope for, you know, there's other really prominent activists that, you know, are able to be on those platforms. Like, and Sophia Kiani is one example of someone who's actively involved in the UN. And I've talked to her a few times and I, have asked her, you know, when you do have the opportunity, I think you should talk about Iran more. And I think it's really important for Generation Z ambassadors to, well, to talk Andrea, about I mean, this. So, some of this is kind of uh -huh. like side chat for us to do, but there's a couple of things that are just kind of brewing in my head. First of all, in addition to a performance, I hope you use the other this festival stage as an opportunity to also speak. You know, would love to would love to have you speak passionately about whatever it is that you want to get out. So that's part one. So I'm putting you to work big time that day. I'm getting a little emotional because um, I'm very proud of people like you, you know, like it's just great what you're doing and you're kind of like taking um, this uh, uh, this torch, you know, and like you're, you're doing your best to like light other people, you know, and like somebody like uh, Sophia Kiani, which actually coincidentally, I was actually scrolling through my feed and she popped up 
you need to reach out to her and be like, hey, become an ambassador and an ally of, of, of what we're doing at Azadi Festival. And all these individuals, and I, you, you, I know you've already started a few of these conversations and we're, we're super slow on time, um, but as many of these individuals that are young and they're, they're active, this is what they should be a part of, you know, because this Azadi Festival, right now, it could become our United Nations. Like what we would want and expect out of an organization that has been around for decades and has millions and millions of dollars of funding, but they have let us down, that means that we have to continue to give power to the people, you know, because it's our people that have to go and do whatever that we have to do to use our voice, to use our platform. And right now, for better or worse, Azadi Festival is one of the biggest stages that we are creating ourselves. So the stage will become as big as we all make it. So we need to reach high and low and left and right and get whoever that we can and you, Andy, you have, you have an amazing opportunity to make a massive, even more massive of an impact that you've already had. So very grateful to have you a part of Azadi Fest with everything you're doing. I laugh at this. I already wrote a speech for Azadi Festival. I was really planning on being able to use my voice. And um, I, I've taken, the one thing also that I want to talk about is our, by doing this festival, we're really bringing back the, the culture that fosters art, poetry, and music. And, you know, this is our, we're a historically progressive culture that prides itself in diversity. And I'm really excited to see what we, what we can do for the community and bring together both East Coast, West Coast. It's just going to be yeah, such I mean, an amazing event. This, and this really is why for the, the live stream component is so important for us to be able to reach other people. And you know, you as a, as a Zartoshi, you know, I'd love for you to be able to educate our audience um, that day uh, in person and virtually about the Zoroastrian history and how it's our history, it's our culture. Like we're all originally Zoroastrian, you know? And so, so and a lot of people don't know that. There yeah. are some Iranians who don't even know that, is that we are the roots of Zartosh, you know? And so, um, you know, good thoughts, good words, good deeds are, are great things that our people were, were born. Um, enlighten and educate about this great uh, religion that we have, you know? Um, so yeah, so definitely yeah. make sure that you talk about Zaratoshi, you make, make sure you talk about um, uh, all the things that you have in mind for the speech and also uh, musical performance. Boy, you're gonna, you're gonna be uh, doing a lot of stuff on July 3rd. So speaking of July... I <laughs> Yeah. Idea allows it, me it's a I good will, thing we have a 12 hour program. Um, so, so tell me actually, uh, now that we're talking about Azadi Festival on July 3rd, what, what is it about the Azadi Festival that a couple of weeks ago, it got your attention and you're like, you know what, I, I want to be a part of this. I want to I wanna help which, whichever way I can to make it uh, successful. I think that, I mean, I'm in DC, you know, in this area and I have, you know, been actively protesting since September and there was something that kind of stopped me a little bit because I noticed there was a lot of disunity and different agendas and I felt like Azadi Festival was doing something that no one else is doing. It's creating unity. It's it's the biggest protest in a way because it's showing that we're going to come together, we're going to celebrate our culture, we're going to enrich each other in in what how beautiful beautiful Iranians are and what how special they are as people and why why it's important to keep up the fight and I think that you know right now there's been a it's been a little bit of a standstill with the, the movement and a lot of people are you know starting to feel overloaded or burnt out and I feel like this is a good opportunity to rejuvenate to be able to speak on, on stage and have different activists and have different performances really enlighten both yeah, non-Iranians sure. sure. and I mean, Iranians. I'm, I'm excited about it. Just the way that we're all working in unity it, in it by itself is the unity and the hope that I myself needed to see, you know? It's like, I was like, I was not seeing it and we're all doing something about it, you know? It's like, don't talk about it, be about it. That's what we're all doing right now. And we're, we're welcoming anybody who's watching either now or later on on YouTube to please join us. You know, this is, it's, we don't want people to just kind of come to the event. We'd rather you be on this side, plan, ideate, brainstorm, strategize, uh, help with your Rolodex of people to connect us with other people 
anybody around you that you've seen fighting for a free and secular Iran, we want you. You know, this is like uh, uh, truly the, the the biggest audition call is that if that's you, if, if you've been fighting for a free Iran, we want you, you know, and so we're looking forward to it. Uh, Andijan, before I let you go, can you tell Tell us what a free Iran looks like to you. A free Iran is a secular democracy that preserves human rights and something where women don't have to necessarily fear their lives and live in this kind of in this hostile environment that they're living in today and having a government that respects those those basic human rights and needs and hopefully within the next year or some i don't know when a free iran will be happening but just to see that livelihood again because it's something that you know you see such a contrast between before the 1979 revolution and now and i just hope that we have that freedom and liberation that we've been longing yeah, especially for especially a lot of non-iranians they think that what is happening in iran is what has always been so they're like we shouldn't touch it it should we shouldn't interfere it's like it was touched it was interfered this was not how we were this is not who we are and we need to break this uh horrible cycle that has been a curse on us you know um well Andy, Jun, yeah. i think uh we have our work cut out uh you know again thank you so much for being an ambassador thank you so much for uh, all that you're doing behind the scenes to amplify the voices of Iranians, to help make the Azadi Festival success, to help with the social media, to bring in your uh, awesome energy, and looking forward to having you be an integral part on stage uh, on July 3rd for Azadi Festival. I'm very excited. Thank you, Imanjir, for having me. Take care. All right. I told you she was awesome. Andia Mehrosami. Uh, what a great example for the younger generation that is continuing to fight in their way. Uh, we're excited to have her. And as I've said over and over and over, ladies and gentlemen, this can only be great if you all join. So if you are still sitting on the sidelines, please come on the field, fight with us. There are so many of our ambassadors right over here. They can put their hand up. You can message them. You can message me. You can message at Let's United Conquer Instagram. You can follow at Let's United Conquer TikTok, which is being run by Andia. Uh, you can follow our YouTube channel, Unite and Conquer. You can like, subscribe, uh, whatever you got to do to stay connected. You can email us at info at letsunitedconquer.com. And you can just hit the links in the bio for more information, including six ways that you can support Azadi Festival. That includes being an advertiser, a sponsor, a supporter, uh, a vendor. Uh, you can be an ally you can be an ambassador you can go to our online merch shop merch shop merch shop we have a ton of great uh Azadi festival merch courtesy of our friends at retail therapy clinic uh it's it's hats t-shirts water bottles stuff for your dogs it's really amazing um everything that's been created thanks to mo namazi um i have a question here our map would you write the name of the lady who just left She's right here, Andia13 is her Instagram, Andia Mehrostami. Uh, follow up with her if you have any questions about joining the Azadi Festival. And I see here Ahdi Music, Ahdi John Durud. He's going to be performing at the Azadi Festival. So will his wife, Sagal, uh, Sonati Dance. In the next few days, we're going to be announcing one by one all the incredible performances that are going to be coming, all the incredible speakers that are becoming. So many uh, amazing people are all coming together under one roof. Actually, it's open air. There's some tents, but also one virtual roof. So it's really a lot of great things happening on July 3rd. If you have no idea what we're talking about, link in bio or azadi-festival.com. Later tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern time, I'm going to be doing another one of these awesome people Instagram lives. Uh, it's going to be with Sarah Kazumi one of our uniters from South Florida. She's coming up with the whole family to DC to help like a true sister. So grateful for her. Um, you know, shout out to Sari Kazumi, Mona Haidi, Mayam Aronson, Shiva Saber. This group is like truly working 24 seven behind the scenes to onboard new participants, to help with the creation of all these beautiful carousel posts that you see on the Instagram page of United Conquer. So much work, ladies and gentlemen, is going on behind the scenes. We are truly working uh, around the clock. Uh, so many ambassadors are doing so much work. So please, 
uh, figure out a way to, to be a lending hand because we need it. We truly need it. There's no Toto here. A uh, lot, lot of work to do, very little time left. I don't want to look how many days left. It's like 13, 14 days. Yeah, we're less than two weeks away. So as excited as we are, lots of work to be done and we need you. So figure out a way that you want to be involved. We'd appreciate you. And for those of you who joined last night, at the end of my Awesome People IG Live with Kamyar, I had a little bit of rant and I've edited it. And I'm going to be posting it tonight after Sauter's video. So I'm looking forward to reposting my rant in its full entirety and I'm pretty excited. And I hope that that group that doesn't want to support us uh, watches it and is at it. I'm getting excited for that rant. All right, guys, it's been a pleasure. Um, if anybody has any questions here, let me see, let me know. Shout out to Pej. Pej is coming. Pej the maniac. He's going to be, he's a hilarious comedian, a big heart. He told me last night that he got his flight. So he's coming. Shaheen Samadi, the rapper, is coming. Ashley Zara is coming. Jemnura uh, Mo Namazi from Montreal is coming. Uh, Ellie from South Florida is coming up. She's creating the, the, the runway to freedom fashion show where she's creating all the, the fabric. We're actually looking for more women volunteers. So if you're a female of all ages, please message us. We need some more people that are going to be um, participating. If anybody here would like to be a part of the, the fashion show, please let us know. If you have a mother, a sister, an aunt, a niece, a daughter, please message Ellie. We need more people. Honestly, this is very, very important. She's stressing out. She needs to know who these people are. She needs to know their sizes. So ambassadors uh, and everybody else watching, uh, please uh, message some people. She's creating some incredibly beautiful design that she's really spent a lot of her personal money to put together all the different stuff. Ellie, we've known her for several months. When she does something, she does it very artistically beautiful. So in addition to the time that she spent, in addition to the money she's spending to fly up here, in addition to all the money she's spending on the material, it's really a lot. So uh, first of all, if you all want to support her, uh, you can message her. I'm sure she'll appreciate a little Venmo, a little bit of Zelle. It's all hambasigi, you know, we got to figure out a way that uh, nobody is like losing their shirt, pun intended, on, the, on this program. So, um, yeah, and I see Ashley just joining in right now. Perfect time. She's coming on Persian Standard Time. And uh, yeah, so all the artists, they're fashionably late. You know, this is, this is what's happening to you guys. Uh, already the Iranian diva uh, mentality is coming out. I'm just kidding. All right. So yeah, so it's great. I'm um, looking forward to uh, 6 p.m. Eastern time. And hopefully uh, you guys enjoy the next couple hours. Maybe I'll take another nap. The only problem is that I'm going to have puffy eyes again, just like I did here. Sahajun, uh, Durud Bashoma, thank you for everything you're doing. Anahita John, Chetori Aziz. We've got the whole ambassadors here. I love it. Dylan is over here. Dylan is our, our adopted Iranian, you know. Um, he's not Iranian, but his heart is bleeding everything about Iran, so it's great. Uh, we have the entire street team that has been passing around all the flyers and posters. We are now at more than 60 stores in the Iranian, uh, in the DC area. That's incredible. Every single Moby Dick. Let me give a shout out to Moby Dick, actually. Moby Dick is one of our sponsors where they are giving us their footprint to be able to put all the posters and the flyers uh, at their almost 30 stores. It's really insane what, what they're doing. It's, um, I'm, I'm very grateful for Moby Dick. They truly are doing everything they can to make Ozzy Festival uh, an amazing experience for the DC community and of course, globally. So shout out to Moby Dick. If you're in the DC area, please go have a juju kebab with half rice and half salad. Get some tadig on the side. Make sure you get some of that green sauce. It's as delicious as it is. When you go over there, say the Ozzy Festival crew has told us to come here for lunch and dinner. Support those type of businesses. Shout out to Alex Momini, the CMO. Shout out to Ned Daryush, the CEO. Thank you guys. Appreciate you all. I don't know why I'm talking talking as if it's at the end of the festival. We got to go back to work, guys. Everybody back to work. Kids, go back to work. Shabbat khair. See you at 6 p.m. Bye. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Bo'omide. Azadi. 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 Bye.